Hello, so just to continue my little rundown of the main political parties coming into this 2017 general election, um, I come to UKIP. I'm doing this broadly speaking in order of the size of the parties. The SNP got fewer popular votes in UKIP, but they got uh, more seats, um, which is a sort of testament to our, I guess, a flaw in our system whereby the number of seats don't allocate to the number of popular votes. So in 2015, UKIP got almost 4 million votes, which was an impressive showing um, for a party that only formed in 1993. Uh, although it's a similar history with the Liberal Democrats, broadly speaking, 20 years after forming, they uh, get votes in the millions. Um, the current leader of UKIP is Paul Nuttall, who is 40 and from Merseyside. So I'm going to say a few things um, about how I see UKIP and their position in this election. And I should emphasise these videos are really, really summarised. It's not intended to be in-depth policy discussions. Excuse me, this mouthpiece keeps sliding down. I just want to be... Yeah. So um, Paul Nuttall has been leader since November 2016. Now, the first thing that strikes me about UKIP is... More so than any other political party, they seem to be a party dominated by one personality, Nigel Farage. And I know uh, UK people will say this isn't the case, but that is definitely the outside perception. UK, more than any other party, seems to be really dominated by one man. So Paul Nuttall is the leader. Douglas Carswell was the only MP, but Farage was UK. He didn't found the party. Um, but he is UKIP in the public mind. Um, that can be both a problem and um, uh, an asset to a party, depending on the character of the person in question. To those who believe that Nigel Farage was a great um, liberal um, figure standing up against this wicked European bureaucracy, then, you know, he's a hero. Um, but to others, he could be the ball and chain. There are those who say that it was Nigel Farage that brought the party more to the right and focused more on immigration sort of issues, whereas the founders of the party said it was more about purely the EU. Um, I, I sort of wonder what UKIP's going to do in this election because to all extents and purposes, they have achieved their objective. They are a Eurosceptic party founded on the basis of Euroscepticism we had a referendum, which they had long campaigned for, and the result went their way. I suppose they would argue they want to be uh, observers of how this process goes, and they want to um, remain active in order to see that um, Brexit goes the way they want it to. But like I say, I feel they've more or less achieved their goals, so in that sense, they were a protest party. I think what's going to happen is... A lot of right-wing conservatives, um, Eurosceptic conservatives, probably went to UKIP when they were unhappy about David Cameron. Um, and now they might come back because although Theresa May voted Remain, um, she has really went out of her way, in my opinion, to to woo the Eurosceptic side um, with some of her hardline approaches. So I do think UKIP is going to lose some votes for to that hard, um, hard line side of the Conservative Party. I think that looking at Paul Nuttall's biography, he maintains many of the sort of hard rights or uh, conservative positions of many people in UKIP who have been former Tories. Um, and that's not a judgment on the man, that's just, that's just a reflection. Um, his positions are very conservative, most of them. Um, in terms of his credibility as a leader, uh, there has been some issues called into questions about things he said about the Liverpool, about, excuse me, the Hillsborough disaster and so on. I'm not going to weigh into that too much on the grounds that I simply don't know. Um, certainly people who know him say that he he never um, claimed in a, at the time to be there or anything. This is important because it is about the credibility of a leader. And UKIP right now, to me, seems a little bit rudderless. Um, I'm not saying he's a weak leader because it's too early to tell, 
if UKIP shows strong in this election, then it will be, obviously, he's a strong leader for that party. Um, I'm not a fan of UKIP. I'm far more to the centre. I believe UKIP's a pretty hard right party. I would agree with them in some areas, probably. Um, some specific policy areas. And certainly looking at his biography, I would agree on some of his positions. Um, but there's other areas I wouldn't agree on. Um, so yeah, that's my take on UKIP. I don't really see the point of the party at the moment, but as observers of Brexit, I imagine they're still going to fight tooth and nail for this. A quick word on Douglas Carswell, because he was their only MP. It's no secret that he had tense relations with Nigel Farage. Now, when a party's leader and its only MP have tense relations, then the party's going to be in difficulty. Um, there are many people who will say Douglas Carswell was never really UKIP in the first place. He was only in the party for a few years. He defected from the Tories, and now he's an independent. Just a quick point about politicians um, changing party when they are a sitting MP for a particular party. To be fair to Douglas Carswell, he did call a by-election or triggered a by-election. And that's right, because I think if if the public vote for a candidate they believe to be a Conservative or Labour or UKIP, and that candidate then chooses changes their party, in a sense it is a betrayal to the voters. So it is right that a by-election is called. Anyway, I'll leave it there. That is my take on UKIP. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Stay tuned for my other videos. These are going to be summarising videos only. Feel free to subscribe and uh, share the video. Thank you for watching.